here at the Coleman's Canyon Multiport Monitoring Well in Central Hayes County, we're performing hydrologic conductivity testing, also known as slug testing. Slug testing helps us understand aquifer properties like permeability or how fast or slow water is moving in a certain aquifer. To conduct a slug test, we'll need to know the depth of the water table. Next, we'll wheel down a water level probe into the well below the water surface, tracking its measurements with the laptop at the surface. Next, we introduce the slug, in this case, a weighted PVC with a known volume. We drop the slug down into the well below the water surface. The idea here is to introduce water displacement. Once the slug is submerged, we rely on the probe to measure water level changes. At first, water level rises when the slug is introduced and over time it will equilibrate to its original water level. Once equilibrated, we pull the slug up, which drops the water level. Eventually, this too will equilibrate. The faster a water level equilibrates, the higher permeability, and the slower water level equilibrates, the lower permeability. With this newly collected data, we can use analytical software to help estimate aquifer permeability, or how fast or slow water is moving through our aquifers. Here's a look at the information gathered from slug testing. So this is a well log of the multi-port well that we installed near Jacob's well. So what this shows is from the, at the very surface, we're in the lower Glen Rose limestone, and we drilled down through the Hensel, Cow Creek, Hammett, Shale, and into the lower Trinity, which is the Sligo and Hoston formations. And these, these lines here indicate various parameters about, about the aquifer and the rocks we're drilling through. But from there, we, we set up this well to have 10 zones, starting with zone number one in the Hoston formation going up. Two is the Sligo, three is the Hammett Shale, which the Hammett Shale seals off the lower trinity from the middle trinity. Then we have several zones within the Cow Creek, one zone in the Hensel formation, two zones, two standard zones in the Lower Glen Rose Formation. And this zone is number 10, but it's not actually a West Bay Multiport zone. It's a standard uh, monitor well zone. But we go in and do testing in each of these zones, say here for the Cow Creek, you know, this little round circle indicates that's a pumping port. We actually open that and get a small interval of screen to which that water can move. So as we put a slug into the water inside the casing, it displaces water in the casing and interacts with the water in the formation outside. And that's how we see that differential in pressures from the inside to the outside as we introduce the slug into the water. And from there, we take those numbers and run it through calculations to determine what the permeability in feet per day is this particular zone. And generally, when the Cow Creek, it's a very permeable unit, so we might see tens to hundreds of feet per day as uh, results. And the Hammett Shale is extremely tight. You know, pretty much no water can move through in the time frames we're interested in. So we basically get 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001 permeabilities in feet per day. So extremely low permeability here and very high permeability in the Cow Creek. And as what we're looking at, as we look at the head values in, in, these, in this well, this is just a figure showing over time how we've measured water levels. So starting in the most shallow zone, which is here at an elevation of about a thousand feet, this is the Lower Glen Rose, where we have that number 10 zone, a traditional zone. But as we go deeper, so here's going depth in the well, and here's head values across the y-axis. So we're actually seeing, say here for the Cow Creek, we're seeing that the head values here are 921 feet above mean sea level. And yet, as we go down to the Hammett, and then particularly into the Sligo of the Lower Trinity, we're seeing elevation values of that head of being 885 feet, again, above mean sea level. So we have a 30, somewhere 35, 36 foot head difference between this aquifer and this aquifer, and only separated by this thin Hammett shale. So that's indicating something significant is going on with these aquifers and these hydrogeologic units to give that much head difference. So that's when we come in with the hydraulic conductivity testing to understand better 
how permeable is the Cow Creek compared to the Sligo and compared to the Hammett. So we can see, is it possible for any water to be moving through here? Which looks very unlikely to have that much head difference between the, the Cow Creek and, and the, the Sligo here. Okay, so we've looked at the methods and how we do some of these calculations, but ultimately the question is, what do we do with this information? And as I mentioned initially, it's like we want to understand better how these aquifers relate to each other and the sub-aquifers, these hydrogeologic units, but essentially we're trying to understand the bigger picture, how the aquifers, whether it's Edwards or the Trinity, the various Trinity subunits, you know, how they respond to pumping stresses, how they respond to drought stresses. And these are all numbers that we need to understand that better and even to put these numbers into a model, whereas we run computer models to simulate the effects of pumping and drought on, on, these, on these aquifers. And in the case of Jacob's Well, we know that there's a large amount of water discharging from the cave passage that discharges at Jacob's Well itself, but we don't fully understand the system further back. Here we have cave divers and go back a mile in the cave. See, yeah, there's all this water is coming, they're swimming against all this water coming out, but they can only go so far before it gets too small. But the water finds its way through all these little cracks and crevices and fractures to eventually discharge at Jacob's Well. So this data that we're gathering from these aquifer tests and all these other tests of, of the multi-port well and other wells in the area, is to better understand how water is getting from the recharge areas into the aquifer where it discharges at Jacob's Well. So we can better understand during periods of drought and different pumping conditions, how much water might we have discharging from Jacob's Well? And at what points might it stop flowing as it does periodically under extreme drought and knowing that local pumping can impact the amount of flow coming out at Jacob's Well. So from there, this will all help us understand better these aquifers so we can better manage the aquifers, so we can prepare for increases in pumping in the future as more people move to the area and the droughts that we're in now, and they will be you know, certainly getting worse. We'll have sometime in the future drought similar to the drought of record, most likely even droughts worse than that. So we have to plan for all these eventualities, you know, and to put it in rules that will then help protect the aquifers and the users of the aquifers.